Welcome to Instruction Discussion, our weekly look at the latest topics and trends in education affecting schools here on Long Island and schools around the world. Whether you're a teacher, parent, or student, listen for tips and strategies to help you navigate the educational landscape. There's a bell. It's time to start today's Instruction Discussion on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hello, I'm Kevin Boston Hill, and welcome to Instruction Discussion, where each week we will examine a recent trend or development in education and its impact on Long Island. Talk to anyone about the importance of college, and you will get a variety of opinions. Some people are adamant that in order to get ahead, students must get a college degree. Others are just as adamant in saying a degree is not entirely necessary and that it isn't worth the expense. Regardless of where you fall on this issue, one thing is clear. Many students are not as excited or interested in college as they once were. While they may understand the importance of college, they see it merely as a means to an end, ignoring the various opportunities that are evident. Contributing to the lack of enthusiasm about college may be the abundance of stress that is placed on admissions. When faced with the prospect that even after crafting an application that has a 3.5 GPA, 100 plus hours of community service, involvement in several clubs and sports, it is still possible not to be accepted to the school of choice. It is no wonder that students have a lackluster approach to college. How can we change this attitude? Our next guest has sampled data from 944 high schools across the country to address the issue of increasing student interest in college. Dr. Tennille Trollian is an associate professor in the Department of Educational Policy and Leadership at the University at Albany, State University of New York, and has done extensive research on the educational experiences that influence college choice and outcomes. Today, she joins us to explain some of her findings. Dr. Trollian, welcome to Instruction Discussion on 90.3 WHPC. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure in, indeed to have you here to, for this discussion because we know that you know every year there are thousands and thousands of high school seniors who are getting ready to go on to college and then being in college yourself. I'm sure you see the students, who, the incoming freshmen who come in or even maybe sophomores and they just don't have the or exhibit the energy level that you would expect of a college student. Talk to us a little bit about what prompted your, I guess, foray into this research. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, So I was really interested in understanding what would improve students' educational aspirations. So what would motivate students to be more interested in pursuing something like a bachelor's degree program? Um, And so I took a look at some data from the high school longitudinal study of 2009, which is one of the federally funded data sets that looks at schools and students and uh, surveys teachers and counselors and parents. Um, And I was interested in trying to make sense of these data to understand what are some of the experiences that students have in high schools that might encourage their educational aspirations and make them more motivated uh, to want to pursue a college degree. Um, And so I looked across a number of different programs, um, thinking about whether students had engaged in uh, programs pertaining to mathematics, right, being part of a math club or going to a summer program for math, Uh, science programs, whether they had done a science summer camp or had done um, science-related programs in high school, their engagement in extracurricular activities during high school, um, being able to take sort of college classes or sit in on college classes as a part of their high school experiences, um, looking for more information or getting information about colleges and universities as a high school student, um, and also talking with people like teachers and counselors in their high schools about going to college. Um, And so I found that a number of these different experiences actually encouraged and improved Mm. students' educational aspirations, um, as well as finding that the more students engaged in these experiences, right, if they did extracurricular activities and talked to a teacher and searched for college information, the more of these activities that they engaged in, um, the more it encouraged uh, and improved their educational aspirations. And so I guess my motivation for looking at this was trying to piece apart or understand what are some of the things that we can be doing in high schools to encourage students to think about college 
um, and to possibly maybe move the needle a little bit on educational aspirations, encouraging them to to think about it and and try to pursue it at some point. So I know you, you mentioned this this was a study done in what two thousand nine, but do you know or is there any role that COVID may have played on the reduction in student ex- excitement? I think so. I mean, I think COVID changed the landscape of of our education system in a number of different ways. And I think it changed students' experiences, uh, both in high school and students who were enrolled in college at the time, um, sort of changing the landscape of the ways in which students engage in education. Um, I think it gave students different views about what it looks like to sort of be enrolled in online high school or Mm -hmm. online college programs. Um, and I think it opened a number of sort of doors for students who had been thinking about, um, you know, when, when we talk about some of the costs of college in particular, a lot of the costs are associated with residential living, right? right. Um, and so I think potentially it, it gave students an sort of exposure to some of these online and distance education experiences. Um, and I hope created uh, some space for students to think about the, the range of possibilities that exist and how one might pursue something like college or post-secondary education. So when we, when we think about college and what usually, as you just mentioned, the the first or well, one of the first things that come along with it is the cost. That's what they automatically associate with that. And they think of is it's so expensive to, to go to college. And I think now with the I guess the increase of online programs, a lot of students and families are opting to that area. So now they're not going onto a physical campus anymore and they're not getting that experience, that campus experience. So does that ha- also have an impact on the, I guess, the level of engagement or excitement about going to college as well, knowing that, well, I, I don't, I'm not going to get the same ex- college campus experience that my parents had because now I'm doing this online. So I'm not going to really think about, it doesn't matter what college I go to anymore. Mm. Yeah, I think students certainly have a lot more options in terms of how they experience college now, right? Mm. With uh, online and distance programs programs, with part-time programs, with um, certificate programs being sort of um, independent sometimes of college degree programs, right? You can get a certificate that might lead to licensure in a particular field. Um, And so I think there's a a big range of options for students now, perhaps a lot more than maybe when their parents were enrolling in college. And so I do think it gives them more options. But I think also it could be um, for many students, uh, some of those choices could perhaps feel overwhelming, right? Which of these choices am I most interested in? Um, And I think one of the things that the traditional college experience, uh, at least some of the research literature has suggested that um, the college experience has often provided a lot of um, exploration for students, right, in terms of career pathways, Um, It allows them to engage uh, at least residential experiences um, in more frequent interactions with faculty and staff on campus. Again, that might lead to more conversations that would give students, um, again, a chance to sort of explore a little bit more. Um, I don't know that that exists in the same way. Um, If students are choosing a degree program, they're selecting a program that is intentionally online, um, they know exactly what they want to do, what courses they need to complete, and their engagement is really limited to those classroom interactions or virtual interactions that they might have with, say, an advisor or something like that. Um, And so I do think it looks quite different. For many students, I think it works well uh, for those students who know exactly what they want to do and are very clear about their pathways. But for students who might be uncertain about those pathways or who might want to do a bit more exploration, Mm. I do think it can be limiting in some of those ways. So I don't know if your research covered this aspect, but did you have you seen maybe that there's an uptick in the number of students who are undeclared as majors when they first come in just for that reason? Because they may not know as a high school student what they want to do in those those next four years. So as a freshman, they're coming in undeclared major just to see what's out there so they can explore. Yeah, we do see that um, students do some of that exploration. I think it depends on what institution they're attending. And uh, for many institutions, there are some majors that uh, they have so many students who are interested in those majors that they are sort of at capacity. And so they are admitting students directly into those majors and students have to make those decisions very, very early. Um, We see a lot of this in business. We see a lot of this in uh, things like some of the STEM fields like engineering, for example. 
Um, and so there are a lot of uh, institutions that are are really limiting who can pursue those majors. And you do have to make those decisions very early if you want to enroll mm-hmm. at some of those institutions. Uh, there are other places, I think, like community colleges are good examples of this. Regional public colleges are good examples of this, where students do have a little more flexibility and time, maybe in their first or second year, um, to be undeclared, right? And to think about what are some of my options and do I want to take courses that might apply to you know, a few degree programs and then declare my major at a later time. Um, But some institutions, uh, it it is very restrictive who can actually end up majoring in some of these fields um, just because they have a high volume of interest in in some of those fields. And so uh, I think it depends a little bit. Uh, The undeclared majors, I think, are much more common um, at some types of institutions than at others. Now, I know you, you began the whole conversation talking about some of the areas that do influence those decisions that students are making. And one of those you talked about are the extracurricular activities. Does it matter what type of extracurricular activities or just that they are involved in something after school that will entice them to pursue a college degree? Yeah. So the variable in this data set um, was very general. Okay. Um, so it really included any type of club or organization. Um, but I did look specifically, um, uniquely at uh, those mathematics types of programs and clubs and science programs and clubs. And I found um, that science programs in particular and clubs, uh, you know, in high school that revolve around science, that those were a unique contributor to students' educational aspirations. Um, That being involved in some type of science experience, whether it was summer program or a club or um, a science type of study organization um, during high school, those really had a unique effect, as did sort of overall extracurricular activities and programs um, as they sort of broadly defined them in the data set. Yeah, I would imagine that if if a student is in a very specific type of club that they they kind of get the idea of what to expect when they do go to college. So that's going to really influence that, that decision as opposed to someone who's in maybe a, uh, an art club, who's an, an art major where they go into college, they don't know if they want to be that engineering major. Now, how, if art is going to translate into that because they haven't tried it out. And uh, we get a lot of students. I don't know if you do, but I've witnessed a lot of students who come into college with a particular major, but they're not ready for it. They don't have the, the requisite background or the foundation that, would prepare them for it. And so they they make these choices based on what their friends are doing or what their parents tell them to do as opposed to what is really good for them. Have, have you seen that as well? Yeah, I think from a higher education perspective, we see a lot of students who um, haven't necessarily had some of that, again, exploration happening in high school. I think as the high school curriculum has shifted over time to become much more sort of structured, right, and thinking about what are the competencies that we want all high school students to graduate with and and thinking about, um, you know, the ways in which we need this many science courses and this many math courses and this many English courses. And um, students have fewer options, right, in the high school curriculum. Uh, They have a lot of options when they get to higher education uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, But they do have to make that transition sometimes without having necessarily thought about or in a lot of detail about what do I want to do after maybe I finish with an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree? Do I want to go on to graduate school? Do I want to go work in a particular field? And so I think a lot of that exploration is happening um, as students get into higher education and have sort of more curricular options and curricular choices, um, which is sort of the nature, I think, of the higher education curriculum, that it is very broad. um, And those general education requirements that students usually take in their first couple of years of college give them that space to sort of think about well, what about sociology or what about English literature or what about history or, you know, what are some of these other fields and and what am I really interested in and what could I potentially major in and then have that lead to sort of a different pathway for me. You are listening to Instruction Discussion on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. My name is Kevin Boston Hill and our guest today is Dr. Tennille Trollian, Associate Professor in the the Department of Educational Policy and Leadership at the University at All Albany State University of New York. And today we're talking about how we can get high school students more excited about college. Let me ask you really quickly, because I think that when parents and families, again, going back to the cost of college and everything, they think about college, they think about it's $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 a year. And and so they're going to put 
pressure on their students or even maybe on the high schools to, to come up with a, a major right away because that's a lot of money to be spending just exploring <laughs> what you want to do. So I think sooner rather than later, they should have some idea. So are, is there anything that maybe high schools are starting to do to kind of turn that around, to provide that that background and that exploration before they even start applying? Yeah, I think high schools have started to do a whole host of things. Um, so there's less room in the high school curriculum to spend time in some of that career exploration. But I do think the extracurricular activities and the the after school programs and, uh, you know, some of the things that high schools do during the summer, I think there are spaces and we are seeing high schools start to do some of that exploration and helping students to think about what do you want to do? What are you interested in? What do you enjoy doing? What, you know, types of experiences have you had that might sort of translate to a particular major or particular career field? Um, I think we're also seeing high schools uh, encouraging students to engage in things like dual enrollment programs, um, where students are registered for both high school classes and maybe also have opportunities to take classes at a local community college or four-year college. Um, and that does a, a few things for students. That gives them an opportunity to experience college courses. Um, it also gives them an opportunity maybe to start to do some of that exploration and some of the classes that they might be taking. Um, and often those uh, courses are actually at low cost or no cost to students who are enrolled in high schools. And so it allows them to earn some college credits for free often uh, before they even get to the sort of transition between high school to college. And so I think dual enrollment and some of the programmatic things that high schools are doing are hopefully encouraging some of that exploration um, and are providing opportunities for students to really think about what, what do I want to do and how do I navigate that pathway? What major do I need to select? What courses might I need to take? What what future career path, uh, you know, what might it look like for me? And I also noticed in your list of those factors that really influence a student's decisions is um, college trips. Does, did your research show about how many colleges, I'm sorry, how many high schools actually sponsor and organize those college trips? So there weren't specifics in this particular data set, mm -hmm. um, thinking about how high schools go about this. And my suspicion about it is that uh, high schools are doing lots of different things, right? Providing students with um, opportunities in, in varying ways to have exposure to college, whether that's visiting a college campus, whether that's having college campus representatives come to their school and, and talk with students. Um, so I think there are lots of different ways that high schools are engaging in this. But the data set that I used, um, because it's so broad and it's this big national survey, um, they really just asked students, did you experience this? And tried to, you know, sort of capture all of the ways that students might experience that within their high schools. But I think high schools are doing lots of different things. Because I would imagine if for a, a high school, especially one that may be limited on funds and so forth, this would be a great opportunity to match up with a community-based organization that can sponsor a trip to out-of-state to an out-of-state school or something, or even to just a surrounding schools, especially if you're in a place like New York, you have literally hundreds of colleges and universities that you can travel to all within an hour's drive. And I think that's something that they could definitely explore. Yeah, I think there are lots of opportunities there. Um, and I think depending on, again, where you might be located, um, I think there are some places that might have lots of options um, and other places that, you know, with the SUNY system in particular, um, which is where I work, uh, you know, they talk about how every student, um, their goal with the SUNY system and, and where they have campuses is that every student is within a um, hundred miles of a SUNY campus. Um, that every student in the state of New York has some type of proximity uh, to a college or university uh, that's administered by the SUNY system. And so, you know, I think at least in the state of New York, I think there are lots of possibilities for students being able to have exposure to just visiting campuses and, and seeing what college is all about. So I know that there are, and I think you mentioned it as well, that there are a lot of high schools now that are trying to incorporate college readiness courses in their programming, whether it's a semester or as much of it as a semester or as an elective or something like that. In your opinion, what do you think should be included in those types of classes? Yeah. So when we think about academic preparation for college, I study college student success as one of my sort of major research areas. And one of the real challenges is uh, students having sort of uh, inadequate academic preparation for the transition to college. Um, and so when they get to college, 
uh, students who haven't taken the right sequence of courses um, or haven't uh, taken sort of college math, right, or college English, uh, that often they end up in remedial or developmental education courses in their first year, which can add credit hours for students. They don't count toward their degrees, but they're required to take them before they can enter college math, right, or college English. And so um, I think you know, one of the sort of things that we have seen a lot of states starting to do is trying to better align their curriculum with the mm. college preparation, right? The college ready curriculum. And so a lot of schools uh, have really restructured their curriculum to provide students with opportunities to, in their, you know, ninth grade, sometimes eighth grade year, start that sequence of college ready math, start that sequence of college ready English, have exposure to science courses and other types of courses that will well prepare them um, for admission to higher education institutions, but also prepare them to be really successful when they get there. Um, and without having to take sort of remedial or developmental education courses, in addition to all of the credits that they'll need to actually complete their degrees. Um, and so we see a lot of colleges uh, working with high schools and, and education systems, really trying to develop these clear college preparation pathways for students. Um, we also see a lot of uh, sort of summer programs trying to address uh, some of these uh, deficiencies in the curriculum. So um, often we see summer bridge programs between 12th grade and admission to uh, college, providing students with some of that um, what we call college knowledge. So mm. thinking about all the things you know to be a successful student, right? Where do I go to talk about financial aid? Who do I need to talk with about planning out my academic program for the next two years or the next four years? Um, who's my advisor? Um, how do I navigate campus? You know, how do I navigate the library? Um, how do I plan ahead um, to make sure I have all the books and, and things that I need for each class and um, sort of providing some of that college preparation. Um, and this is particularly helpful for students who are called what uh, we call first generation college students, right? Whose parents or siblings or other family members may not have attended college. Um, and so uh, for students who can't necessarily ask, you know, mom, hey, what did you do to navigate this situation on campus? We hope to create programs where students can uh, find the right person to talk to that will help them navigate that and give them some of that sort of college knowledge um, as additional support in addition to, you know, some of the sort of academic preparation. Now, I know that when it comes to, again, the high school student preparing for college, the one person that they can go to, that central person in high schools is the guidance counselor. Now, how can or how effective can a high school guidance counselor be in supporting students' exploration when they have such a heavy caseload of, of sometimes hundreds of students that they have to work with? Yeah, this is a really interesting question because so the research that I did, as well as a whole bunch of research on college, uh, on high school guidance counselors and high school career counselors, suggests how important their role is. Um, it, over and over again, we see demonstrated in the research literature that they really do contribute to uh, student success and moving toward high school graduation, but also in helping students navigate the college application and admissions process. Um, as well as my my research found that they actually encourage and uh, improve students' educational aspirations too, right? Making students believe that they can actually um, earn a college degree. Um, but this is sort of um, challenged by the fact that high school guidance counselors and high school counselors um, have been uh, shrinking in number across the country. Um, and that where, you know, it used to be, I think the recommendation is having one counselor for every 250 students. Mm -hmm. Um in high schools, that's not really what's happening anymore. Often we see one counselor for every 1,000 or 1,500 wow. students um, in some cases. And so it can be really, really challenging for um, guidance counselors to do the important work that they do when they have such little time to spend with each individual student. And the, the college choice process and college admissions process is so individualized. Um, that that individual attention and support is really what's needed to help a lot of students navigate all of that process. Now, I would imagine that, especially since we are talking about the future lives of students, 
why not have students more involved in the process? And by that, I mean, why not give them like a, a, a survey at the beginning of their freshman year in high school, you know, to find out what is it that you might be interested in or even in their junior year? What is it that you might be interested in to see what do an interest inventory so that now you can kind of guide them in those areas so that by the time they are a senior, they have a little bit more concrete plan before they even get into college. So now they can go in on a more on more sure footing. Yeah, I think that there's lots of opportunity to do some of that career exploration. And um, there have been some sort of developed career exploration and interest kind of inventories that have been developed largely in the psychology literature. Mm -hmm. um, but they have really tried to sort of assess what are students' interests? What are things that they might be interested in spending their time doing? What do they enjoy doing? Um, and so I think, you know, use of those or even the development of you know, as you mentioned, just sort of a survey that a high school might put together to ask students about what are you interested in and how can I use this information as your teacher or counselor or advisor to really help support uh, you thinking about what courses might I take that are aligned with that or what extracurricular activities might I be involved in that are aligned with that or are there summer jobs or internships that might prepare me for that type of work sometime in the future. We see lots of high school students now um, doing summer jobs that are relevant to potential future work. Um, and so, you know, are there spaces uh, in students' lives earlier on um, that might help them to better navigate those pathways. And, and I don't know if the research has pointed this out as well, but what is the, or has there been an impact on um, micro-credentialing? So now, now the students are don't have to necessarily sit in a full year of a class or even get a full degree just to get those skills that they need for uh, like maybe like a, a computer programming a type of, of career. Yeah, we're seeing a lot more micro credentials sort of popping up in terms of um, particularly certificate programs. Institutions are starting to think about are there short term educational experiences that might lead students um, and even adults, right, um, who have finished college degrees to sort of improve their skills in one specific area. Um, and so we do see a lot more of these micro credentials popping up and, and students pursuing them. What I'm seeing most often um, in my work is that students are often pursuing some of those certificate programs alongside a more traditional college degree, like an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, um, as sort of as an additional area of specialization or an additional credential that might make them, you know, more marketable on the job market. Um, I work in educational policy and leadership, and we have certificate programs in community college leadership that is very specific to that sector, um, and also in international education. Uh, and so students are sort of pairing these things together. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. We would certainly like to thank our guest today, Dr. Tanil Trollian, Associate Professor in the Department of Educational Policy and Leadership at the University at Albany State University of New York for coming on to our show today. Thank you so much for having me. Once again, my name is Kevin Boston Hill, and thank you all for listening to Instruction Discussion right here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.